What's going on, ladies? Maybe some gents. If you're here, I can only assume that you want to learn how to lose weight during a really rough time in your life, which is perimenopause and menopause. Now, fat loss is tough enough during this period of life, but you have a few things also going against you here. You've gained weight in your midsection. You're really not happy with the way you look, and your hormones are a lot of whack. Now, what you used to do just doesn't seem to work anymore, and I can venture to guess that once you hit these mistakes today, what you used to do is actually what's hurting you now. But why should you listen to a 25-year-old dude about fat loss over 40 during perimenopause and menopause? Well, I've helped dozens of women do this exact thing through hormone changes, through perimenopause, through menopause, to lose the fat and keep it off for life. I'm also super passionate about this age group and about the women that I coach because my mom went through these same things. And she went through a terrible time through menopause and now she's got diagnosed with early onset dementia a couple years ago. All of this is linked strongly with diet and exercise, and I wanna help people avoid this all the while getting the body they love. Now, before I get into the five big mistakes, I actually have a community where I coach women for free through Q and A's, through live trainings, free guides on Facebook. If you wanna join my Facebook community, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how to do that and what the Facebook group looks like later on in the video. Now, what you all came here for, the five biggest mistakes you might be making during your menopause fat loss journey. Let's dive into it. A lot of these mistakes have to do with a very central theme, which is going to be building muscle or maintaining muscle as you age. Some of them don't, but most of them do. So keeping that in mind as we talk about these mistakes is key. The number one mistake that I see women over 40, when we go through perimenopause and menopause, doing consistently is cutting out carbs. And this is by no fault of your own if you've cut out carbs in the past. This is what so many people in the keto crowd tells you to do um, because carbs are what's making you fat. Well, I'm here to say that's not true at all. It just happens, so happens that most of the carbs that people are eating in the standard American diet are highly refined processed carbs and sugars that you might find in your pantry or on the center aisles of the grocery store. And those are easily, easily eaten. They're highly caloric and they don't fill you up. So you just want more and more and more of them. And that's really where this cutting out carbs myth comes from. And I can tell you right now, if you cut out carbs, initially the scale will drop maybe five to 10 pounds. A lot of it's going to be inflammation and water, but I will say the scale will always, almost always, verification, almost always go back up after you cut out those carbs, especially because you're probably not going to be able to cut carbs out for an extended period of time. It's not a sustainable diet change. And so once you bring those carbs back in, the weight will come back. Also, carbs are your body's preferred energy source. 80% of the energy that you expend daily is used through carbohydrates. It prefers carbs each and every day for the majority of your tasks. Carbs are also helpful in building muscle. Your muscle loves to pull in glucose. It loves to pull in that muscle glycogen and use the carbohydrates in order to build and perform. And muscle is huge in your fat loss journey. If you want to learn a little bit more about building muscle and why that's important, you can go watch my previous video that I did on my channel which in turn comes back to, if you're not eating enough carbs, your body's got to find preferred energy from somewhere else, which a lot of times happens to be muscle. It starts paring down muscle in order to um, pull in that energy that it needs. Granted, if you're way over eating calories, then that's not gonna be the case. But most of the time, you know, the women that I'm talking to are not eating enough calories. So make sure you're eating enough carbs in order to, you know, have the energy, avoid like insane brain fog, insane cravings, and have a sustainable weight loss plan. All right, mistake number two is only doing cardio and HIIT workouts. Again, this goes back to the muscle building thing. Muscle is so important, not only for just general well-being as you age, strength, avoiding injury as you age, it's also super important for your metabolism. And doing only cardio and HIIT is not really that great for your metabolism. Um, listen, I ran cross country for 10 years. I love cardio. I think it has a place in every workout especially if you enjoy doing cardio. But cardio is probably not helping you with the body goals that you have. The way that you wanna look is really gonna come from that muscle. It's not gonna come from burning a whole bunch of calories and doing a ton of, ton of cardio and HIIT workouts. Whenever you're doing a whole bunch of cardio and burning a whole bunch of calories, your body starts becoming more efficient. So if you burn 200 calories running a mile right now, in a month, if you do this consistently, you're going to only start burning 150 calories and then 100 calories. Your body wants to become more efficient because it doesn't want to burn all of those calories over and over and over again. Your body's smart. It starts adapting. 
And so you're going to have to work harder and harder, which in turn causes some metabolic adaptation. Your metabolism slows down in order to make up for this calorie difference. And you're going to start parsing down muscle in order to make up for that calorie difference. And so, like I said, this mistake too goes along with you want more muscle and cardio and HIIT workouts are not going to help you do that. Even if you're using weights in the HIIT workouts, you're really not going to be building muscle like you would be just doing a traditional resistance training regimen. So those are the first two. Re recapping. The first mistake is cutting out carbs. We don't want to cut out carbs. The second mistake we talked about is only doing cardio and HIIT workouts. We want to avoid that. If you can, you know, put, add it in there a little bit of time. The best cardio, in my opinion, especially over 40, 50, 60, is going to be walking. Just moving a little bit more because most people don't move enough. Which brings us to the third mistake, which is skipping meals and fasting, which has become extremely popular in the last 10 years. If you're skipping meals, I'm assuming you're probably skipping breakfast. That's what most people skip. And then you're snacking late at night, which is the exact reason you're snacking late at night is because you're skipping breakfast. I see this in almost every single one of my clients that I work with, if they're skipping breakfast, they say, well, I can't, I just can't stop snacking at night. Well, it's because your body didn't have enough fuel through the first six hours of the day before lunch. Then you're eating a light lunch because you think you need to eat less, but then at dinner, you're super hungry. So you eat a whole bunch of food and then you're still hungry after that. So then eight, nine o'clock rolls around and you're diving into the pantry to find whatever you can. Skipping meals is not necessarily good for you. There are is evidence that shows intermittent fasting is, is good for um, cell regeneration and fat loss and this and that, but all it is doing is creating a calorie deficit. But long-term, it's not a great solution, especially as your hormones start changing through perimenopause and menopause. Your body needs energy from somewhere, especially during that first part of the day when cortisol is spiking. What it's going to do if it doesn't have the energy through food, again, is start paring muscle down. It's going to start breaking down muscle for that glucose to put into your bloodstream. And whenever it does that in the morning, your cortisol spikes. If you're not intaking food, it's going to continue spiking higher than it probably would if you had food. And that comes back down to cortisol spikes because it's like a, uh, a stress response to waking up. It helps wake you up. But then initially our bodies want that food. That's why it's called break breakfast, break fast. Um, you're breaking that fast in the morning. And if you have food, it helps lower that cortisol, helps lower that stress response. And it's going to help you burn more fat in the long run if you're lowering that cortisol. Because as your hormones start changing, your hormones like cortisol and insulin get all thrown out of whack and you need to manage those as best as possible. So fasting and skipping meals is not good for you. Even skipping dinner and lunch, that is not good for you there. Because going back to that insulin in your blood sugar, if you're skipping lunch, if you're skipping dinner, your blood sugar is going to be all over the place. Your calorie counts are going to be all over the place. And our bodies don't like that at all. Our bodies really like consistency. Pretty much the same thing every single day for your body is like gold for it. And the better, better you can do that, the easier fat loss is going to be. And if there is no consistency in your day to day, your fat mass stores are going to continue growing because your body really doesn't know what to expect. And when it doesn't know what to expect, it feels like it needs to have something in its back pocket in order to pull energy from. And that's where the fat mass stores come from if you're not consistent. All right. That's mistake number three. Again, so far we've talked about not cutting carbs, not doing a ton of cardio and hit, and we don't want to skip meals. So stop the fasting, add carbs back in and start resistance training is what we've learned so far. The fourth mistake that I want to talk about, I talk about all the time, not eating enough protein. This is huge. If you want a full breakdown, you can go check out my video all about protein, but not eating enough protein is huge for muscle growth. Again, you need that protein in order to have muscle growth. The protein's also going to help you feel really full. So if you have trouble with cravings, if you have trouble overeating, that's going to help you feel more satiated every single day. Protein's also going to help boost your energy because your cells can't recover without enough protein. So if your cells are starting able to recover, you're going to start feeling more energetic. Your hair is going to be fuller. Your skin is going to feel better because you're getting enough of those amino acids that are in say collagen protein and your life is just going to get so much easier because you're eating enough protein. A lot of what women miss that I talk to is this protein aspect. I talk to them and they're eating 50, 60 grams a day and they think they're eating a lot. When in reality, you need closer to at least 100 grams a day, which I know is hard to get to. If you want to know how to get to that again, go watch my other video on my channel. All right. I'm going to interject here and talk a little bit about how I mentioned you could get into my free Facebook community in order to get access to myself to ask questions my live trainings, my guides, 
all of my resources that I give out for free to the women in this community so that I can help them lose weight and feel great without having to pay for my coaching because I know a lot of people can. Or if you just wanna get in there and understand a little bit more about my coaching, you can do that too. To get into my group, I have the link in the description of this video. Go down to that, click the link. You have to answer a couple questions to get in. But once you answer those questions, I'll approve you and I'll kind of show you around a little bit. I'm gonna make sure you get set up right whenever you're in the group. So if you want in, go ahead and click that link in the description. Now on to the final mistake. Recapping one more time for you. We've talked about cutting carbs. We don't wanna do that. We've talked about cardio and HIIT workouts. We wanna resistance train. We don't wanna make that mistake of doing only cardio and HIIT. We've talked about skipping meals and the intermittent fasting. That's not great for you, especially as your hormones start changing. And then we've talked about not eating enough protein. This one's a little bit tricky to talk about, but I feel like it needs to be mentioned because I see so many women that are kind of going through this process and they think that supplements or drugs will fix all of their issues. Now, will they help with symptoms? Yes, but will they help you fix your metabolism and your weight loss? No, no, they won't. Now, I know some of you are probably watching this saying, well, I took this and I felt great after, or I take this supplement and I'm doing this, I'm doing great now. And that's great, I'm really happy for you, but for 99% of the population that's going through menopause, perimenopause, these hormone changes, this is gonna fix their symptoms, but it's not fixing the root cause of what a lot of this might be stemming from. And one big thing I know I should bring up is hormone replacement therapy, HRT, and it's common and it's helpful for a lot of people, but you can't just say, well, I think I need to get on HRT, you need to talk to your doctor. A lot of women that think they need estrogen uh, don't actually need it. I think people think that they need testosterone, don't actually need it. So please talk to your doctor, get your blood work done and make sure that everything uh, is where it needs to be or not where it needs to be before you get HRT. Now talking about why these supplements and drugs don't really work, it's because they just treat symptoms. That's what they're made to do. Um, if you're treating the symptom, you might feel better, but long-term you're not getting to the root cause, the why of the issue. Lifestyle change, diet change, exercise change is the only way to really do that. Now, I'm not saying that lifestyle change and diet change is going to completely cure you of these hormone levels and low estrogen and menopause because your body changes naturally. That's just what happens. But you can use it to manage these symptoms, especially if you want to lose weight. This is the way to lose weight is by lifestyle change. And I've seen over and over through the people that I've coached and through the studies that it regulates hormones and it's going to help decrease the symptoms of perimenopause and menopause. In turn, all helping with your metabolism so you can eat more and still lose weight. And that's all five mistakes that I wanna talk about today. Now, if you find yourself making these mistakes consistently and you think it's time for a change, I hope this is your sign. If you have any questions for me, you can drop them in the comments. As a reminder, you will have full access to me if you join my Facebook group. Again, link is in the description to join that group. Because I would love to help you on this journey as you're aging over 40, 50, 60, going through perimenopause and menopause, because I wish I could have helped my mom and I was too late getting to where I am now to help her. So if this is you, if you're over 40, 50, 60, and you want to drop weight, if you want to get rid of your perimenopause and menopause symptoms, then I hope this channel is for you. You can hit subscribe and I'll see you next Sunday.